idea. Hi. What are you going to talk about today? I'm going to talk about um, the first woman in Māori myth and um, why this story is important to me and how I learnt it. Um, when I was at college, um, I used to go to a all girls Māori school college and um, the big thing for them was that um, you learnt about wahine tour, which is um, what it is to be a Māori woman and how proud you should be. Um, and I drew a lot of strength and a lot of thoughts from this um, story. And it begins with um, Tane Mahuta and Hene Ahuone, who was moulded from clay um, at Kurawaka, which is um, the genital area of Papatuanuku, the Mother Earth. And um, this clay was of red earth, so it's like a red colour, and she was moulded in shape and form of a woman. And Tane Mahuta gave her a hongi, pressing of the nose, and she sneezed. And that's where Tihei Mauri Ora comes from. Um, and with that was born the first woman. Um, they had a relationship together and um, she born to him a, a child, a daughter, her name was Hine Titama, um, and she was the first dawn maiden. Um, very strong woman um, and that she then had a relationship with her father, Tane Mahuta, um, and they bore many children as well. And it wasn't until she grew older when she asked Tane Mahuta, who's my father? And he turned to her and said to her to ask the four corner posts of the marae. Um, so in a marae you will have the four corners that hold all the knowledge of your whakapapa. Um, so it kind of refers to the tiko tiko and the carvings um, of a marae that will tell the whakapapa of the iwi, um, of yourself, of any sort of person that was important to that, to that marae or that whare nui. So he told her to ask the four corners of the, of the marae, to which she did, and that's where she discovered that um, Tane Mahuta was her, her father. So her name was Hene Titama and at that point she was so ashamed that she had um, had this relationship with her own father and bore to him all these, all these children. Um, and from there she, she fled, she, she separated from him and after becoming the, the dawn maiden um, of first light, um, she changed herself into whom we know as Hene Nui Tepo um, and she said to Tane that um, he can nurture and take care of all their kids now while they're on in, in this living earth. Um, he can watch over them but when it's their time to die or pass on that they would descend to her and she went into the underworld. Um, and she called herself Hine Nui Te Po at that stage. So when a person dies, they take their journey um, up to Te Reinga, Te Reinga Wairua, um, and then it's said that they jump off, travel back to Hawaii, Hawaii Nui, and then um, descend into the realm of the underworld where Hine Nui Te Po waits for them and will mother them forevermore um, in what we would probably call heaven type thing and um, to enter you you enter her through her vagina again so you're going back into her womb um, and she carries you as her own child again um, and the story goes on that Maui who was another big Māori legend um, tried to conquer death and his way of conquering it was that he was going to enter the underworld and try and defeat Hine Nui Te Pō so that men could live forevermore. Um, he changed himself into a lizard 
and um, started his descent through between her legs and there were three, three or five birds watching, can't remember, um, and one of them was the fantail, the Te Waiwaka, and that's why in some iwi across the land um, some Māori will see the, the fantail as an omen of death, um, only because it was the Te Waiwaka's fault that that Maui failed in this task because um, once he had changed into a lizard he thought it was so hilarious that he'd, he started to laugh as Maui was taking, taking his journey um, between her legs and she woke and crushed him and that's why it, to this day we come into, the, come into the world, have our life on earth and then make our descent into the underworld and go back to her and um, it's important to me because of the, she's triumphed in, in every way. She's been the first born woman, um, she's, she's come from the first light to being the dawn maiden, the, the first thing that we see and the first mother to nurture, you know, to nurture all of us and then to also go through those times of trial and, and shame with her husband and make her descent into the underworld where she'll then continue her role as a mother and um, yeah, look after us. So it, it was a kind of a role model for you? Yeah, very much. Um, role model because of the power and mana that she had, um, strictly because she had gone through all these all these things. She'd gone through happiness and joy with her husband, who she thought was her husband and only her husband, not her father as well, and then also experienced um, shame and despair with her husband as well and had to leave her kids um, and make her descent and, and hand her kid, kids over to her husband for a temporary time. And to me, um, that's a huge role for a woman to to, to pass up, I guess, um, and for her to um, to still hold her pride and know that, and still take a place, not just walk away altogether. She she kind of commanded and said, "This is what will happen. You will do this, and I will do this." So that Maui changing in a lizard, mm -hmm. and that father doing that stuff to her. How how is that as a role model? Does that that how, how do you look at men when you look at this and when you think back of this, this story? Um, I don't think anything of it, only because they, back in those days, that's, that's how it was. And that's how you kept the whakapapa within, um, within your own family. And there was things, such things as mana whenua and um, mana tāne. Tāne also have their, their own role and I see that as, as a specific role um, in that Tāne needed to procreate. There was only him at first and he needed to create this woman and also bear more children and more generations so that there could be a human race thereafter and um, these were, he was a god and for there to be demigods and humans thereafter, this I see this as something that needed to happen. It was a necessity. So um, I think when I think about Tani's role and Maui's role, um, both very important roles in that um, he had to spread his seed, I guess. And same with with Maui, he he had to give it a go. He wanted there to be. Um, life ever after, I guess, and um, and for um, humankind to be immortal. Not everyone wants to die, so and that's what his um, goal was. Mm. Would you say there's an al analogy between this story and Adam and Eve story? Is that more very or less much? The same? Yeah, very much. I would say it's kind of a mix of Adam and Eve and. Um, yeah. And 
Definitely. They run on two parallels for me personally, Christianity and um, Māori religion as well. Um, we would pray to, um, in, in the Māori realm, we would pay, pray to um, the gods of the forest or the gods of the sea or the gods of the gardens and of cultivation. Um, and there is Eo Matua, which is the supreme god, which would be equivalent in Christianity to God Almighty. Um, and I think that maybe if you looked at it with um, in Māori Dim, maybe we break it down a bit. It breaks it off, they, and, and we do acknowledge every single leader within a realm of, or within a kingdom, um, and I would call it a kingdom. Um, and it makes you appreciate your resource and <coughs> everything that, I mean, it goes as far as when you walk into a house or whether or not it's a, it's a marae or a whareinui or just a person's house, there's always a heart of the house that you would acknowledge when you go into a person's home and that it might be the kitchen because from that comes all the food and food's what connects people and um, it's like a networking tool. And it's, it's like the heart of the home, really. And I think it's important as a Māori, or as anyone, to um, appreciate and acknowledge um, different places that things come from. Mm. Although I went to a Māori girls boarding school, we also practice Christianity at the same time. And um, I guess some... Some people that don't know anything about Māori world or um, Māori tikanga may think, oh, maybe they get confused by it all, but it's very easy to, um, to put them side by side and know where the links are and where things come from as well. And I think um, it's funny because sometimes when I say a karakia for kai, so we'll sit down and say karakia before we eat, I don't necessarily feel that I'm praying to God alone um, to bless my food. It, it's always to the spirits or to anything that looks after me, be it tāne mahuta, be it tangaroa. Or, um, and the same thing is we could say, I could say the Lord's Prayer in English and then I feel like I'm praying to God. But if I say it in Māori, I feel like I'm praying to everyone. Um, to my ancestors, to people that have passed on before me, to just just to say thank you for always being here and watching over me, and um, yeah, and just acknowledging where they are, where everyone is. <laughs>